Do you know God's plan for your life? What about the next step he's calling you towards? We don't always have a clear path in our lives, and sometimes we get off course following our own dreams and desires. If you're struggling to understand where God wants you to go, pray something like this. God, you know everything there is to know. Your plan is perfect and glorious. Thank you for including me in your creation and for giving me the awareness to know your love. I often wander in my life, led by my own desires, but you always find me. I want to follow you, Lord, because your path is holy. This week, please show me where you want me to go. By the power of your Holy Spirit, strengthen my walk and give me the courage to take the steps towards you. Please align my will with yours. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God, you are the king. You're the king of our hearts. You're the king of glory. You're the king of majesty. You're the king of heaven. King of kings, Lord of lords. God above all other gods. Your name above all other names. We worship you. Death could not hold you, you failed all before you, you silenced the bones of sin and grace, the heavens are roaring, the praise of
Hey, St. Louis Church, it is a great day, and I could not be more excited that you are here. You are there. My name is Pastor Jeff, and I'm the online campus pastor. I want you to know that, that we hope you will continue to make St. Louis Church a part of your summer. I, I, I know we all take vacations, we go all over the place, and that is awesome. But don't leave St. Louis Church out of it. We want to come with you. You can always find us right here during the entire summer. I want you to know that that we are able to meet you wherever and whenever you are because of those of you who give. The reason why we're able to do this and, and continue to have you connected to St. Louis Church is because of those of you who give financially to St. Louis Church. Hey, I wanna say thank you so much for giving. If you want to give and you maybe you've never given before, all you have to do is go to give.sc or give on our St. Louis Church app. I hope that you will you will help others just like you continue to get Sandals Church right where they are, people all over the world. Now, for the continuation into our series, How to Pray, here's our lead pastor, Matt Brown. Hi guys, welcome to Sandals Church. I'm so glad you guys are joining us, man. We are in this series called How to Pray. We all know that we need to pray for, pray more, amen? All of us do. Like, I mean, the truth is we need to pray for, more for our marriages, for our finances, for our kids, for our life. We need to learn to pray. And here's the thing. I wanna challenge you to pray today. And here's the truth. When you need prayer the most, that's when you pray the least. And so what I'm gonna talk about today is how to pray through disappointment. So when we get disappointed, right, we, we lock ourselves up in our closet. We pull away from our friends, our family. Some of you stop attending church. Isn't it that sad when we need a message from God? That's when we're like, nope, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go to church this week. And so how do we pray through disappointment? Okay, and this is so, so key because life is not always gonna be great. It's not always going to be everything you've ever wanted, right? It's like my mustache, slightly disappointing, amen? Like it's like... <laughs> I don't, I don't know how I feel about that, Pastor. Um, 
You know, everyone asks me, no one cares at all what I think about it. Everyone says, what does Tammy think? What does Tammy think? We call it the danger zone. That's what it is, right? <laughs> Top Gun, baby. Um, I don't know. So what do you do when you get disappointed? Most of you, you know, you go to Netflix. Some of you go to alcohol. Some of you go to an old habit you thought, man, you had buried a long time ago. What do you do when you're disappointed? What do you do when you're borderline depressed? Man, the Lord's Prayer is an amazing, amazing place to go when you feel disappointed. And I'm gonna pull something out today that you've maybe never thought of or considered in the Lord's Prayer that is just a nugget of wisdom for when your marriage isn't where you want it, when your finances aren't where you want it, when, when you wanna be, you know, be married but you're single, when you're married and you're wishing you were single, right? <laughs> what do you do when you're disappointed? So Jesus said this, this then, this then is how you should pray. Our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Man, there's so much there. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, there is a nugget of truth for you today in this prayer. So how to pray through disappointment. I don't know what you're going through, but I know how you should pray. Number one, write this down. Tell God how you feel. Man, you can fake it in a lot of relationships. You cannot fake it with God. Tell God how you feel. If there is one place where you should be 100% honest, you say, Pastor, we should be 100% honest everywhere. No, that's called being fired. <laughs> Divorced, <laughs> friendless, and alone. I mean, who, who tells you to just say what you feel? No, don't, <laughs> just bring it down. People are always like, pastor, you want me to be real? I'm like, no, no. I'm... But with God, here's the thing, with God, he can take it. He can handle it. Listen to me, if Jesus could hang on that cross, he can hang on to your disappointment. Peter says this, cast all, cast all of your anxiety on him. Why? because he cares for you. Like, I love you, but I can only care for so long, amen? <laughs> amen? I mean, how many of you guys just love, you love when people complain to you? I'm like, uh-huh, 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 I need you to stop. I mean, even your own children, if they're negative, you're like, I need you to go outside. <laughs> I birthed you, but I need you to leave. Like, we, we gave life to you, but you need to fly. Go, go, go. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I mean, you try to care, you try to listen. Like Tammy and I, we're gonna have a discussion. I'm gonna listen, you're my wife. You, you birthed the children that brought forth and continued my name. I'm going to listen. Nah, I can't do it. <laughs> Why? Why is that? Because when somebody shares their heart with us, sometimes it hurts our heart. When somebody's offended, sometimes when they share it offends us. I mean, that's a scary thing about sharing our emotions is oftentimes the very person we need to listen is the person who can't handle it. God can always handle it. So you go to God, you go to God, man, and you tell God everything you're feeling. You never censor your prayers, even if it's explicit. Even if it's explicit. And if you don't believe me, read Psalms. Man, there's some prayers in there that you're like, I don't even know if I can be a Christian after I read that. It's so, like, it's, it's just like, you're going to do what to children? I mean, that's just right. But yeah, whoa, time out, time out. David needs some Zoloft, amen? Right, you know, let's get him some therapy. But you know what David's doing? He's, he's like, he, here, here's the best way to get the evil out of your heart. It's just to, it's just to admit it. It's just to admit it. And you just got to, you just got to talk with God about it. When's the last time you told God how you felt? So here's the thing is, he already knows. So don't be afraid. God, in the middle of your prayer, God's not gonna go, what? <laughs> Jesus, get over here. You're not gonna believe what Matt did. <laughs> Holy Spirit, did you know you knew? You knew. Man, here's the thing is, 
The thing that keeps me from being totally honest with Tammy or my kids or even with you is I'm afraid how you're gonna react. Here's the thing, you never have to worry about God's reaction because he already knows. So tell God how you feel. Tell God how you feel. Let me give you some stuff that, that I've been dealing with. I've been dealing with some disappointment lately. Some pretty heavy disappointment. And here's what I told God. I said, God, I feel messed with. You ever felt messed with? I mean, think about it. If you're single and somebody asks you out on a date and it doesn't work out, you just feel messed with, don't you? Yes. I mean, you just, you just do. Like, you could have left me alone. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen. I mean, some of the ladies in here are like, Lord, let him hear that. Let him hear it. <laughs> but d don't you feel messed with? You ever been recruited and they don't pick you? I was fine where I was. Why, why, you know, why, why did you have to flirt? I, I was fine. I mean, Lord, I, I feel messed with. I mean, that's the thing is, God, what, what's going on here? Because here's, here's the bottom line. What, when you feel messed with, you're questioning God's plan. Lord, I don't know. I, I know that you're like all knowing, but this feels wrong. Tammy and I are in counseling. Actually, we graduated from counseling. I know. I was top gun of therapy. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. But guys, I love you. Like we, 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 we come into emotional relationships like missing a leg or something. I don't know what it is, but, but what, what the counselor always would do to me is he'd hand me a feelings chart. <laughs> it was color coded, you know. I feel, and I had like a thousand words to choose from. Because if our guys were just like mad, that's how I feel. But sometimes we gotta check in with our heart and say, God, here's how I'm feeling. And recently, I mean, I had, to say, I had to say this to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm mad at you. I, I didn't want to say it. He already knew. I didn't want to say it. Why? Because I want to live, right? I mean, you know, I mean, be real, you know, just not that real. You, you get zapped. What happened to Pastor Matt? He was praying. Um, <laughs> the Lord was just like, this is over. Um, you know? I mean, if I was God, I'd, I'd kill people all the time in prayer. I, wouldn't you? I, I just would zap, zap. But Lord, I, 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 feel, I feel angry. I feel angry. I feel messed with. I, I feel mad. How about this one? I feel manipulated. You ever been manipulated by a Christian who, who used God's will to do voodoo on you? <laughs> Can I just be honest with you guys? I mean, none of you, but my deepest wounds have come from Jesus people. Yep. 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 Yes. Like, as far as I know, I've never been wounded by a Satanist, you know? Like, I don't know that I've ever been stabbed in the heart by an atheist, <laughs> but the Lord's people, they're like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Because people use God's language, right? Oh, the Lord really put this on my heart, you know? And then, and then, it's, then it's manipulative and, and it hurts and we got to process this. Because like if your parents hurt you and they don't know Jesus, well, we need to pray for them. But if they're pastors, oh, what do I do with that? How about this? You ever just feel completely missed? Like, God, I must be invisible today. You ever, you ever felt invisible? Like, it, I hate that when you're in the bathroom and, and, and I don't know who invented the, the technology. What, why can't we just pull a towel? I don't know. Did that need improvement? Was there something wrong with that process? We just, we see a towel, we pull a towel. Everybody feels seen, heard, you know. Have you ever done that? And you're just, you're just, you know. And you just keep believing, huh? Oh, no, no, this is, this is the time. This is the time. 
It's frustrating, isn't it? Like if you're a young person, some things just don't need to be invented. Just, we don't need that. And that's how I feel sometimes. Like, right, I'm praying and God's like, nothing, nothing, nothing. And it's like, Lord, do you hear me? So how am I gonna keep praying when I feel like I'm not heard? You know what most of us do? We stop. And here's the thing. If you're disappointed with God, you need to pray to God even more. This is when you need it. See, if you're married, guess when you need to talk the most? Like, it's, it's, that's why I don't like weddings. Nobody cares what you say. Nobody's listening. You're just staring into each other's eyes. You're so sexy. Oh. You know, I'm going to listen, love you, put you first, serve Jesus every day with you, blah, 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 right? <laughs> it's not real. It's not real. But when do you need to talk the most as a couple? When you're not okay. You see, we avoid the conversations that we need to have the most. And so here's what the Lord's telling you today if you're disappointed with him. He says, I know. I know we need to talk. I know you need to talk. I'm waiting for you to talk. And you're like, nope, Lord, I got hurt. I'm not gonna go to the church. I'm not talking anymore. I'm not praying anymore. And that's when you need it the most. You need it the most. So let me just challenge you. When you feel the most disappointed with God is when you need to go to God the most. So if you feel messed with, missed, manipulated, I'm sorry. Life is hard. Figuring out God's will is not easy. And sometimes people are just messed up. Christian people are messed up. So how do you pray through disappointment? First is just, just be honest. Tell God how you feel. Next, ask God for what you might be missing. Do you feel missed today? Well, here's the truth. God hasn't missed you. He's never left you. He's never been closer to you, even if you can't feel him. What, what, what maybe have you missed? Like if you're a parent and you feel bad, like I think all parents, we just, like if you, here's, here's how you know if you're a good parent, if you feel bad about being a parent. You know how you're a terrible parent? You're like, oh, I'm smoking it. I'm incredible. My kids are dynamic. Like you're the worst per parent ever. Good parents, good parents feel bad about being parents, right? Because you realize how scary it is to develop the life of the next generation. Mary and Joseph, they got one task. Don't lose Jesus. <laughs> the Holy Spirit took care of the pregnancy. The wise man took care of the finances. <laughs> Don't lose the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Luke 2, 43, this is in God's word. Jesus wanted us to know this. <laughs> Mary and Joseph, after the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not miss him at first. <laughs> well, this, this journey sure is quiet. I don't know, you know, kids, Jesus must be sleeping in the back of the minivan. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. They lost Jesus. Let me just ask you, if Mary and Joseph can miss the physical Jesus, maybe you are, you are missing the spiritual Jesus. Nope, it's all God's fault. One of my favorite Christmas movies every year I watch is Home Alone. Home Alone, Macaulay Culkin, he was cute when he was little, scary looking as an adult. But, you know, Maybe he was just too cute as a kid. The Lord's like, we got to balance that out. Um, but Macaulay Culkin, remember when his mama, if you haven't seen this movie, his mama is on an airplane going to Europe. I feel like something's <laughs> missing. <laughs> and it, it's the greatest word ever written in film. Kevin! And that's, that, that's what some of you guys, man, you, you're, just, you're just on your, your flight. You're just cruising through life. 
You think the problem's God and God's like, wonder what you're missing. And my prayer for you today is you have that moment where you're like, Kevin, what is it? Mary and Joseph are like, Jesus, we lost Jesus. And here's the scary thing is his father already knew. You're like, ah. <laughs> Let me give you some questions to ask. You see, here's the problem with disappointment. We want, we want to know what God's doing. God wants you to learn to ask, what are you doing? So here's some great questions to ask when you're disappointing with God. First question, have I sinned? So let me give you a verse to think about and pray about. Romans 3.23, this is a bedrock Christian verse. Like our whole faith is built upon this understanding. The reason we believe in Jesus as savior is because we believe we're sinners, every single one of you. Romans 3.23, for everyone has sinned. You can pray about if everyone includes you. You can pray about it, you know? I mean, my wife knows I'm a sinner. She needs to remind herself, she's a sinner. <laughs> hey, I'm just quoting the word of God. That's all I'm doing. I'm just preaching, just preaching. It's not me convicting you, it's the Lord. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Let me just ask you, you sin all day, every day because you're a sinner. When's the last time you, you, you confessed your sin? You just said, oh man. See, and here's the thing is, I think we think of, of sin as things we do, like, oh, I, I had sex and it was wrong, or I did this, it was wrong. And, and we don't ever think about how sin affects relationships. Do you know what sin at its core does? Is it breaks your relationship with God. That's what it does. So some of you've missed Jesus in this because you're sin. You're like, oh man, where have I sinned? And, and so here's the thing. Sin is like this big, ugly word in the Christian faith where we're all terrified to admit what we're supposed to admit to be a Christian, right? Like you, when have you ever been to a Christian school where their mascot is the sinners, you know? <laughs> like the incredible sinners, you know, the, the, the glorious sinners, you know, the serious sinners, right? It'll rhyme. That's what, that's what we're supposed to do. When's the last time you were able to say, okay, Lord, I know I've sinned. I just don't know where it is. H have I sinned? And so sin is this big, ugly word. And here's what you think it means is you, you think it means evil. Sometimes it does. But its core meaning in the New Testament is to miss the mark. So if I'm in, if I'm in archery, and I'm trying to hit a bullseye and I pull that bow back and I let the arrow go and I hit anything but dead center of the bullseye, that's sin. So unless you're perfect, wait, where Lord maybe have I missed? What am I missing? That's what sin is. What am I missing, Lord? Learn to ask that. God, I know there's sin here. What am I missing? Next, is there something I need to learn? I was preaching at another church, not Sandals. Okay, so nobody say, I think it was you. But this woman came up to me. She's in tears, falling apart, barely able, to, barely able to get the words out. This is what she says to me. She says, I got fired from my job. My husband left me and my kids won't speak to me. What is wrong with people in this world today? I was like, whoa, you got fired at work. Your husband left you and your kids won't speak to you. I'm gonna guess, you know, I'm not a genius or a psychic, but I got a sneaky feeling. <laughs> it's you. Man, listen to me. I told you we graduated from counseling, right? I said that, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was reading, I was reading our, our, our therapist's book and, and there was this chapter and here's what he said. He said, it, it amazes me how people will come to counseling and spend money to lie to my face. Wow. Whoa. Why would you waste your money if you don't plan on learning? Isn't that crazy? What do I need to learn? Because when I'm disappointed with God, I promise you the problem is never God. <laughs> 
I know I'm so holy. It's hard for you to believe. <laughs> it's never the Lord. It's me. What, what do I need to learn? How about this? Is God protecting me from something I can't see? Oh, Lord, I'm, I, I thought, I thought he was the one. God, I don't know why you get my heart all wrapped in this relationship just to smash it. Why, why couldn't we have gotten married? What if the Lord is delivering you from something you can't see? Because after all, love is what? Blind. It makes you dumb. Okay. Isn't it amazing what we blame God that our heart got us into? So, Lord, what is it that you can see? See, see, that's an invitation, isn't it? That's an invitation to something deeper. You see, here's why we pray to God. God has a perspective that I don't have. God has an intelligence and a wisdom I don't have. So, God, what is it that you see? You love me. You care for me. You promised in your word. You would never, when I ask for bread, give me a snake. You would never do that, Lord. And I wanted this, and I thought I needed this. I thought I had this. And I didn't get this. And for some of us, right, it's a real thing, like love. I want love. I want a friend. I need a job. Like, these aren't like, I want to win the lottery. Like, I always get mad when people win the lottery, which makes no sense, because I don't play. <laughs> what is my problem? Somebody won this week, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I could have won, Lord, you know. He's like, what, do I got to drop the ticket on you? <laughs> you know, I literally told the Lord this. Do you know what I could have done with that money? <laughs> could have paid all Sandals bills, worked for free like Jesus. <laughs> I don't play. I don't, I, you know, I just, I don't, sorry. But how to, how to, how to pray through disappointment. This is key. Thank God for what he's done in the past. Do you know what will give you an escape from your present suffering? Remembering yesterday's blessing. I got to go out to dinner with one of my good friends and, and I love this man. Um, I care for this man and, and his daughter has just battled, battled mental illness. It's been, it's been a challenge. And we went out to dinner and we got to go to dinner with him and his daughter and she was um, cheery. She spoke to us. She hugged me. These, these are things that for years never happened. And we went home and I, and I told my wife, I said, could you believe how dinner was? Like nobody got hit, nobody got hurt. <laughs> like, I, and I texted him and I said this, I said, I couldn't take my eyes off your daughter all night. I was blown away. And he immediately texts back and he said, I can't believe it either. I thank God every day for the miracle that she is. You see, what gets me to depress today is I forgot about yesterday's miracle. Can I just tell you, you're not going to get a miracle every day. But when you do get one, never forget it. Never forget it. Listen to what Paul says in the letter to the Ephesians. He says, and I give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a guy writing from prison. He's writing from prison. He spent most of his adult life in prison. And when he got out of prison, he had to pastor churches. And as a pastor, prison doesn't seem so bad all the time. You know, I'm like, you know, we get, we get to work out. You know, I get to eat. I know who my roommate is, you know. You know, that was his life. He was either a prisoner or a pastor. How did he get through life? He reminded himself of the day he got saved when he was struck blind on the road to Damascus. We, listen to me, when you hear Paul's testimony every time, you know what he talks about? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Like he says, he says over and over. When you read the book of Acts, you ever wonder, you're like, Paul, I got it. Like, I got your, over 
and over and over again. Here's the thing. It's not just other people that need to hear your testimony. It's you. It's you. Because when I'm mad at God today, you know what that means? I forgot about his blessing yesterday. I forgot. You know why your marriage is unraveling? You're too in the moment. You're too in the moment. Take a step back, zoom out. And say, what has the Lord done over our life? What has the Lord done? Tammy and I, we watched, uh, this is the one year anniversary of our, our, our daughter getting married. And we watched the video from the wedding last night, which was really interesting because I don't remember a thing um, <laughs> from the wedding that I paid for. You know, I remember signing the checks, that's it. Um, but here's the thing is, I was so stressed in the moment, I missed the moment. And my wife's like, are you crying? It's like, yeah. Here's the thing. I was there that day, but I missed that day. It was a beautiful day. People were having fun. All I remember is fighting my drunk neighbor. That's all I remember. <laughs> he didn't make the video. Isn't that crazy? Last year, you know what video my wife and I watched? Our 25th wedding anniversary video. It was on VHS. Some of you don't know what that is. <laughs> we watched that. And, and here's the thing I was struck by, how incredibly beautiful she was. And she was going to stand there in front of God and say yes to me. But all I remember from that day was the stress. Parents, Amen. The days are long, but the years are short. Maybe the reason you're so disappointed is you're too in the moment. You know, people go to yoga to get in the present. That's what I'm trying to escape, man. <laughs> Just be in the moment. You know, from the guy that's 40, you know, and has never had a job in his life telling me to chill. It's chill, man. So think about this. The best way to escape the hurt from today is to think about the blessings of yesterday. And so here's the thing, right? So if you're in, you're in the worst fight you've ever had in your marriage, you're in the worst financial situation you've ever been in in your life, you're in the worst relational chaos, right? In, in that moment, that's what it feels like. Take a step back and think about when have you also been in that experience and what did God do? Oh, God got me out of that. He's going to get me out of this. Next, how might God be blessing me in the present? So, so what happens if I'm disappointed? Man, I have to trust that God took something from me that wasn't good for me. And here's the thing is, that's easy if I didn't really want it. But what if I want it with every ounce of my being and God still says no? That's hard. That's hard. And if some of you are sitting in that right now today, I don't want to minimize that. I just want to say, I feel your pain. That's hard. And it hurts. Next, accept where God has me today. Okay, Lord. Okay, Lord. I'm going to be single. Okay, Lord, I got divorced. That's not what I wanted. Okay, okay, Lord, this is not what I had for my kid. Okay, okay, Lord, this is, you know, uh, getting fired with $70,000 a gallon of gas. That, that wasn't my plan, you know? That wasn't my plan, Lord. But okay. You see, here's where we pray the Lord's Prayer. Listen to this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the hardest part of the prayer to pray. You see, we're not praying this when we won the lottery. No. Your kingdom come. <laughs> Your will be done, right? No, 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 no. You're not praying that. You're praying that when your marriage is unraveling, Lord, your will be done. Your kingdom come. 
right? You're praying that when your kids are going off the rails. You're, pray, you're praying that when your life's a mess. You're, you're pr praying that when your life's a disaster, right? Your will be done, your kingdom come. And Jesus models this when he almost is, is preparing to die on the cross. Lord, I don't wanna die on the cross. Lord, I don't wanna go through this hurt. I don't wanna go through this pain. God, this was not my plan, but not my will be done yours. Why? Because that's how we bring in the kingdom. You see, we bring in the kingdom when we submit to the king. That's the problem. But we don't wanna submit to the king. We wanna be the king, amen? My wife loves British royalty. I think it's weird. We're Irish. <laughs> like we've been slaves for a thousand years to these people. You know? She's like, the queen has ruled for 70 years. Like, I don't care. <laughs> but did you know for 70 years, England has had no king? She had a husband but he is not the king. Isn't that interesting? Do you know why that is? Because when there's a king, the queen doesn't rule. You see, some of you, you've been living your life with no king because you want to sit on the throne. And she holds that throne until there's a king. You see, that's what it means to pray that kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The queen is called the sovereign. And what that means is she rules as she pleases. You see, God is supposed to rule as he pleases. And that's when we pray this. Lord, this is not what I wanted. This was not my plan. This hurt, man, God, this hurt. Lord, I, I thought she was my friend. She stabbed me in the back. Lord, I just want a friend. I thought these people in my group were really gonna love me, were really gonna minister to me. And it just, man, I just, Lord, I, I just, I don't trust people anymore. This hurt too bad. You, you, you couldn't have called me to love people. These people? I mean, Lord, these are the people that put you on the cross. But the Lord says, kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see, in heaven, everybody does what the Lord says. And it's called, interestingly, heaven. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? When everybody does what God says, it's heaven. When we do what we want, it's not heaven. It's hell on earth. You see, here's the thing I've learned is I'm not mad or hurt because God's plan hasn't happened <laughs> I'm mad because he didn't listen to my plan and it was an excellent plan and I worked really hard on it. <laughs> this is what the Bible says. You can make many plans, but it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail. <sighs> That's what it means to be a Christian, to live every day saying, Lord, what's your plan? And that doesn't mean we don't make plans. You'd be like, it's the Lord's will. I'm not going to work. You're going to be hungry. <laughs> and going to hang out with some people that are stinky. Just saying, that's in your future. But what it means is when we do the best we can to lay out a plan and it doesn't work, we go, oh, okay. Okay. You got something else for me. Peter says this, so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. Listen to this, and at the right time, he'll lift you up in honor. We used to, every single year for 10 years, we would take a road trip to Big Sur, from Southern California to Big Sur. And for those of you who watch from, from other states, the California coast, you know, I mean, pray for us here in communist China. I mean, uh, <laughs> in California. Um, but the coast, the coast is just, it's just beautiful. It just is. Um, beautiful scenery miserable to travel with children. It just, it just is because they don't care about trees, ocean. They don't care about anything except ruining the view. That's their goal. <laughs> That's their plan. And what the kids would always say is, are we there yet? Like we, we could be in the car 10 minutes. Are we there yet? Are we there? Right? And then they have to pee. I had to pee. We all peed. Everyone peed. I was there. I saw everyone. Everyone went pee. How, 
How can you go again? When you want to, you're a camel. I don't understand what's <laughs> happening right now. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Is it time? Is it time? Is it time? And I'm just driving. I'm singing. I could just go, I could just go right off the cliff. Just <laughs> Like it'd be scary for a moment, but then there'd be peace, right? It'd be, be peace. Sometimes, though, we're that way with the Lord, right? Is it time? Is it time? Is it time? You're going to honor me now? You're going to honor me now? You're going to honor me now? you get blessed me now? Am I going to raise now? I'm going to raise now? Get married now? Get married now? You know? Are we going to have a kid? Are we going to have a kid? Are we going to have a kid? Are these kids going to go out? Are they going to leave? Are they ever going to go? Are they ever going to go? <laughs> Listen to me. Here's the thing is, here's why we struggle with God's plan. Here's what every one of you knows about yourself. Okay? We're going to take humility and kick it out the door for a second. Here's what you know about yourself. You know there's more to your life than what you've experienced. That's why there's a thing called depression. If everyone was living at their maximum ability, nobody'd be depressed. Depression is the recognition that there's a gap between what you're experiencing and what you know could be. That's what depression is. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I want God to honor me, where he's called me, right? That's what I think I can do. That's what I think I can be, right? If I want God to honor me there, I have to honor him here. That's how I get there. You know what that means? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth where my feet are right now. On earth as it is in heaven. Man, know this. The best way to experience all that life has is to pray, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done today. This is not what I wanted. This is not what I've planned, but I'm gonna trust you in this and listen to me and he will lift you up. He will lift you up. Listen to me, if you're single and you wanna be married, you know the best way for God to honor you with a marriage is for you to honor him with your body in singleness. Amen. You wanna know the best way to derail that future marriage is with your body in singleness. That's the best way. You gotta trust God where you are so he'll take you where you know you should be. Next, you gotta trust God and his plans for your future. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is what the Bible says. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Why do we call everything that goes wrong an act of God? What if God is saying, don't live in Oklahoma. There are tornadoes there. Why is it always an act of God? The Lord's like, the wind is scary here. You know? People, we always want, everyone's lived by water. I don't know what happened. I don't know why our house flooded. You live by water. You paid a premium to live by water. Listen, this is what the Lord says. There are plans for good and not for disaster. Plans to give you a future and a hope. What's the key to disappointment? Hope. That tomorrow can be different. You see, that's the beauty, right? We're not stuck in a moment. There's no such thing as the present. It's constantly moving forward. God is doing something. He's working in something, no matter how disappointing, no matter how you're just, oh my God, how on earth could I have been so wrong? I mean, I, I, I meet people that have gone through divorces. I did everything right. I, I, I dated a Christian. We had, we had, we had uh, perfect sexual boundaries and, and the marriage still failed. It still blew up. What happened, God? God still has a plan. He's still gonna work through that disappointment, through that discouragement, through that destruction. Some of you don't know this, but Jeremiah 29, 11 is right in the middle of Israel burning down to the ground and all the men are dead and women are being sold into slavery. And the young are carried off to Babylon and God says, I know the plans I have for you. Amen. Today you're a slave in handcuffs marching to Babylon, but tomorrow, tomorrow, I know the plans I have for you. 
plans for a future and hope. So what do we do? We just sit back and wait for God's plan? Tammy's grandpa was an amazing man. He used to always say, Matt, put feet to your prayers. Put feet to your prayers. I want to challenge you today not just to pray, but I want you to put some feet to your prayers. You want to know how you pray through disappointment? You, pos you position yourself for God's blessing. Man, one of my favorite passages of scripture is Isaiah chapter six. And the Lord says, who will go from me? Who shall we send? There's one guy in the temple. One guy, his name is Isaiah. He says, here I am, Lord, send me. He positioned himself for the Lord's blessing. Nobody else heard that. Nobody else experienced that. Only Isaiah, because he positioned himself to hear God's call. And some of you are going to miss God's call because you're sulking about yesterday's miss. Kick in the can. <laughs> Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Listen to me. How do you position yourself today? Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. It's one of my favorite passages. If, if I have done your wedding, I preach this at your wedding, whether you remember it or not. You didn't hear it. You were like, hey, she's so hot. He's so handsome. We're going to love Jesus. No, you just want to love each other. That's what you were thinking about. <laughs> Every wedding I've ever done at Sandals Church, I use this verse. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity. Why? Because these days are evil. So don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. Let me just tell you something. As your pastor, when everybody's doing something, I don't do it. <laughs> well, let's go with the crowd. What could go wrong? <laughs> you know? I'm just telling you. When everybody's saying, go that way, your little Jesus ears need to go, Hit. I think all my friends are dumb. And the Lord's like, yes. <laughs> yes. I got to buy a house. They're not making any more land. Have you been to Hawaii? <laughs> They're making land. Well, God is through a volcano. But like, right, we just all just, well, okay. The people in charge have gotten smarter. All right. <laughs> but understand what the Lord's will is. Listen to me. Tammy and I, this last month, have had, had three of the most disappointing things that have happened to us. One of them was something I had to choose. A lifelong dream. A lifelong dream. Something I've wanted to do my whole life was given to me. Here. Someone handed it to me. Tammy and I made the mistake of praying about it. Right? I mean, because every blessing is from God. Hmm. Pretty sure that apple looked pretty good. Tammy and I prayed about it. Two of our disappointments the last month were not of our choosing. Can I just be honest? We weren't chosen. It hurt. It's fun to come in second, isn't it? <gasps> okay. But this one, this one was an opportunity. And my wife, God bless her, I hate it when she uses Jesus on me. <laughs> this is what she said. She said, I'll, she said, I'll follow you and I'll do whatever you want. And I was like, oh. I said, I'm going to pray about it. She said, okay. And she just said, just know this. She said, I'll go wherever you go. I was like, oh, Jesus. And, and I'm telling you, this is a lifelong dream, lifelong opportunity. And the other party said yes. And the Lord told me, no. And I said no to my dream. And I told Tammy and she said, 
I knew. I was like, why didn't you tell me? She's like, she's like, you're the spiritual leader and the pastor. And, and I just, I just knew I was going to, I mean, she, she like, I knew, I knew when she's like, I'm just going to follow you. I'm like, oh dear God, it's the plank. Like husbands, when your wife says, I'll follow you. That's the plank. You're just like, okay. You know, I'm following Jesus, you know, but it was hard. Can I just ask you, are you at a place in your life where you could say no to an opportunity? because it's not a part of God's kingdom. And I had to call my friend who gave me this opportunity, great guy, and I just said, I don't have peace about it. And as soon as I hung up the phone, listen to me, I felt great. I felt great. Position yourself to God's kingdom. Three things. This is a long sermon. You guys are listening slow. Here we go. Number one. Position yourself constantly to share God's message. I try to live my life in such a way that I can share God's message. Next, position yourself to serve God's mission. You need to learn, especially men, to say no to jobs that will take too much of your time and you no longer are able to serve the Lord. Position yourself to serve God's kingdom. Next, position yourself to give to God's kingdom. I never make a financial decision if there's a chance that the Lord would ask me to give to something and I can't do it. You see, the size of my house, the quality of my cars, that's my kingdom. That's not what Jesus asked me to pray for. I pray for his kingdom. I pray for his house. I serve his church. And here's the thing, man. Here's the thing about disappointment. It will rob you of future blessings. Don't let today's feelings keep you from tomorrow's blessings. Don't do it. The Lord loves you. Pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. You know what earth means? It means you. <laughs> be a Lord, bless the earth with your will. No, no, he means you. You. In Hebrew, the same word for earth is the same word for Adam. <laughs> you. Oh, okay. Lord, your will be done in my heart, just as it is in heaven. Look, I love you. Let me pray over you. And I just want to pray that you would trust God with your future because he has amazing things for you, things that will blow your mind, but things that will never happen if you can't serve him today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus, Lord, that you would bless us in the midst of our heartache, our hurt, our disappointment, our discouragement, Lord. You would just speak to us and to say, you know the plans you have for us. And those plans begin with these words, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. Lord, bless us with the courage to pray your will, to unleash your power in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. How are you positioning yourself for God to use you? Hopefully this message spoke to you in such a way for you to ask the question, how am I positioning myself? One of the ways to help you position yourself for, for God's will and for what he has for you is, by, is just by reading the Bible. Maybe some of you know this, maybe some of you don't, but, but on our St. Louis Church app, we have a Bible reading plan. We have so many plans to help you to connect with God so that you can know His will. All you have to do is go to stainlesschurch.com slash app and download that. We actually have, we, have, we have tons of prayer plans developed just for you to know how to pray. All you have to do is check it out. And hey, if you're with family right now or if you're with someone, maybe you're at the St. Louis Church Anywhere location and there are others around you, I want you to, to ask yourself and ask others this question. And that is, have I positioned myself lately to know the will of God? Ask that with those around you. And hey, I want you to know that St. Louis Church loves you. I love you. And I hope to see you here next weekend and throughout the summer as we continue in our series, How to Pray.